Yo, it's your boy Ryan, Northwest Sports Fanatics. I got you the new video. Today is Saturday, March 23rd, 2024, with your boy Ryan and the Northwest Sports Fanatics. Make sure you guys subscribe to the channel. Smash that like button either now or on your way out. Donate to your boy if you can. Cash app, dollar sign, O R I O N N W S F, or the YouTube super chat right here. We got a trip and a birth to the Sweet 16. Number 11, Oregon Ducks. Go Ducks, baby. Versus the number three, Creighton Blue Jays. Let's go. The boy is ready. And uh, I think a majority of the country, I would probably say about 80 to 90% has Creighton winning, which they probably should, you know, being the three seed. But for us out here in the Pacific Northwest and the way that Jermaine has played, you know, we're not saying that he's going to put up another 40-point game since he's not going against his former school like he did in the previous matchup there at South Carolina. But uh, I think that the Duck fans and I think the Ducks are confident that we can hang with Creighton. And I think that even if it is only a small percentage, 10 to maybe 20% of the brackets that have the Ducks, uh, I think that, you know, we might not be as good on the college basketball side compared to the football side. But uh, I think the Ducks can definitely hang, and it wouldn't surprise me if we end up getting the dub here tonight. Let's go, baby. I am ready. Let's get some music queued up. Let's go. I am ready. And then I had to hit you with the thumb. Ooh, baby. You already know what I did. I had to hit you with Jermaine on the left. And then I had to give Creighton a little bit of love. Oh, baby, on the right. Let's go. Are you ready? I am. Let's go, baby. Oh, my goodness. All right, let's get situated here. I got to get a couple of screens set up. And um, Baylor, you know, on the right, you got to make sure that you're keeping an eye on him and a lefty, too. So this should be a good matchup here. And then it is going to start here just momentarily. So let me get switched over with some screens. Took a little while to get situated here. Just finished up the uh, NC State Oakland matchup. All right, let's go. Go, Ducks. And make sure you're taking care of your mental health. Again, we go through battles every single day with ourselves. Make sure you're doing the proper things every day and make sure you're checking off those boxes to be successful and to win the day. Let's go. Ready. Let's get it. Sarah in the building. What's good? Let's get to 100 in donos. Let's do it. Let's go, baby. Smash the like button. Any surprises for you earlier today, either for the men and the women's? I caught a little bit of Iowa, but when you have a 1 and a 16 going against each other, there's little or no hope for that 16 seed. Now, if it ends up being a 2 and a 15, you know, sometimes you'll end up getting a 15 seed upsetting a 2, but more than likely it ends up being like a 12 upsetting a 5, which we always get at least one out of the four every single year. And sometimes we get lucky where we end up getting two uh, maybe even as high as three, but this should be interesting. It's not going to be easy here tonight. And uh, this is our first March Madness stream on the channel with the Ducks. And then uh, we'll sprinkle in a few, obviously, as we get further along from the Sweet 16 to the Elite Eight, the Final Four, and the championship game. And I typically do the Final Four every year, and I do the championship every year. But uh, depending on what the matchups are, I wouldn't mind sprinkling in a little Caitlin Clark for Iowa because that's probably the biggest name in college hoops, men's or women's. But once we end up getting to the Final Four, I'll do that, and I'll do the championship game. So, And then as far as the women's are concerned, depending on who ends up getting to the championship, I would you know, probably consider... Like if somehow Iowa can find a way with Caitlin Clark to get it to the championship game, you know, if they can get to the final four and make it to the championship, yeah, I probably would end up doing that particular matchup uh, just because I want to see if she can end up making history. And it really doesn't matter if you're a guy or a girl, if it's men's or women's hoops, if you're greatness, I want to make sure that I'm watching. So shout out to everyone watching on Twitter slash X, as well as on YouTube. Salute to you guys. I love you and I appreciate you. And uh, does that really surprise you they were close right after you know the initial first half right they were pretty close right with was like a one-point game but again you know it seems like Kansas you know they may not be the same type of team they were a few years ago but on the flip side Gonzaga they have a good record against some of the upper echelon teams from the past but whenever they get to the championship or the final four the elite eight it seems like Gonzaga always choked so congratulations to them, the Zags, you know, for getting the dub against, you know, Kansas, 
you know, obviously today, but, you know, until Gonzaga actually ends up winning it all, you know, obviously the doubters will doubt for a, a good reason. And uh, we'll have to see, you know, if it ends up being Purdue, uh, you know, this season or someone else, maybe UConn, you know, we'll have to kind of see where the ball bounces for the men's and the women's. Let's go. Matt in the building. What's good? How are you? Any other matchups worth uh, keeping up on right now or are most of them uh, a little out of reach? Let's go, baby. I hope you guys enjoyed the thumb. You know, it was my uh, first thumb, you know, for March Madness. So, uh, of course, that means that I have to put in a little bit more work with the images. Uh, since I don't have anything saved. Uh, but I figured, you know, I have to find the proper background. I want to be able to find something that's bright and inviting as far as like basketball courts. I didn't want to use just the March Madness background. And sometimes when you can find a colorful background, I was actually looking for something even more colorful as far as the sky is concerned, you know, with maybe some pinks and some blues. But uh, I settled on this one. I think it turned out pretty good. And uh, obviously, uh, Jermaine on the left. Oh, baby. And you already know what it is. Baylor on the right. We'll see which competitor will step up for their you know respective team to be able to get the dub here this evening. Jermaine 16.1 points per game, 40.0 field goal percentage, and he at the line you know, around 75%. And then obviously with Baylor there on the right, the lefty 18.3 points per game, shooting a little bit better, 45% from the field, and he's a better free throw shooter as well, uh, rounding up 87% from the line, and that could become a factor as we get deeper into the match. Up. Let's go, baby. And I feel like, you know, uh, the thumbnails are, are coming along. Daniel in the building, what's good? How are you? And uh, I'm excited for this particular matchup. Let's go. And then we got uh, more March Madness tomorrow. Uh, we have a uh, NASCAR, uh, you know, Circuit of the Americas at 1230 Pacific, which I'll be watching, but I won't be streaming. If we can get enough people to love NASCAR as much as me, because I love pretty much everything, you know, I wouldn't mind, uh, you know, taking a stab at it and, and trying to be able to do it. But I'll watch it amazingly, spend some time with my pup, uh, and then we'll end up more than likely doing the Canadians versus the Kraken uh, at 6 p.m. Pacific after NASCAR is over. But before we get into that, we got Duck. We got Creighton Blue Jays. Let's go. Let's go, baby. Let's go. West Virginia and Iowa. If you want to go over the matchup, Sarah, since we have a little bit of time to kill, if you got the bracket in front of you, uh, whether you or Matt can do that for me, I would appreciate it. So if you can kind of relay, you know, some of the matchups that we're going to end up having, you know, in the next round, uh, I would appreciate that. And it looks like they uh, pushed the game back a few minutes. As you can see there at the top of the screen, we were supposed to get started uh, at 640 Pacific. And uh, for whatever reason now, they're going to let the players warm up a little bit longer because that uh, previous matchup got extended. So it looks like we're going to have around a 703 tip off. If I would have known that, I probably would wouldn't have started as soon as I did, you know, uh, but again, it's all good. You know, like I said, everyone's in here uh, in the building and it'll give us a chance to watch some of the other matchups, but uh, that's what they're showing on the screen. I don't know if that is accurate or not, or if they'll end up getting started a little bit sooner, but I mean, if the matchup is starting at 640, um, I don't really understand why we have to wait till 703, but it is what it is. Let's go, baby. All right, I'll throw up some photos while we're waiting. And if anyone has anything that they want to be able to throw up photo-wise uh, while we wait, just comment in the chat. Shout out to all the people watching on Twitter slash X. Uh, you don't have an ability to necessarily type anything on that end on the stream yet until Twitter slash X incorporates their stream with YouTube. Uh, but again, if you send me a, a message on Twitter slash X for the different examples, I'll respond back to you and I'll be able to get that going as well. Uh, you can actually like the stream here on the YouTube side they don't have that implemented on the Twitter slash X side yet, uh, as well as donos. You can do Cash App or you can do the Super Chat, but you have to do the Super Chat through YouTube. Let's go. I'm ready. Right, let, me get a, let me get a couple of Jermaine here first as we look at his uh, amazing thumb. And then we'll go from there. And I'll even give uh, a little love for Creighton as well. So one sec here. Hope everyone is having a fantastic Saturday. 
And if we have any chance tonight, Jermaine has to go off. You know, he's our senior guard. You know, I'm not saying that he's going to have to put up 40, but I, if I had to take a guess, I would assume, you know, probably 28 or higher would be the magic number. Now, if we can get closer to that, you know, 35 to 40 number, great. But how likely is it to put up 40 points against your former team that you went to play against in the previous round, and then he's going to throw up another 40. I'm not saying it's impossible, but it's not that likely to do a back-to-back 40-point -back game. But, you know, never say never, right? You never know. No ducks, baby. You know, us here in the Pacific Northwest, we're ready. There was a lot of duck gear. Uh, you know, mostly football fans just repping the basketball team, but I saw a lot of flags out in the neighborhood. You know, I had the sweats on, the full duck gear while I was taking Paisley on a walk. We, uh, the storms are starting to come in here in the Pacific Northwest, but uh, I, I didn't get rained on too bad. And uh, now we're just getting ready to have a nice little nightcap, and hopefully we can finish it up with a duck victory. Let's go, baby. Come on, Jermaine. Jermaine. And we ain't talking Dupree, baby. Let's go. Who's our baby? He's gonna put on a show. Let's go, baby. We got faith here. Duck fans, we believe. Especially when it all started, you know, beating Arizona, right? And then once you beat Arizona, then you're like, oh, we'll take care of Colorado. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. South Carolina, good night. And, uh, you know, they've been on a little bit of a tear. You know, uh, last five games, Utah, UCLA, Arizona, Colorado, and then South Carolina. 66, 68, 67, 75, and then an explosion of 87 points, 40 from Kusnard. So I'm not sure if we're going to get to that particular mark, but I hope so. And then on the flip side, Creighton's last five games, uh, they got four dubs and a loss. So they got 85, 89, 69, 73 in a loss against Providence, and then 77 against uh, Arkansas in that matchup just a few days ago. Let's go, baby. Megan in the building, what's good? Gotta be a team effort too. I'm very interested to see who else will step up for the duck. But Kusnard has to go off, baby. Come on, Jermaine. Let's go. Megan, I appreciate the uh, the share on the Twitter slash X. And if anyone does have Twitter slash X, please uh, do your boy a solid and like and retweet the stream. It'll help us get more people in the building. I appreciate that. Almost 100 that we got in the building already. I like that. Let's go, baby. Shout out to you guys. And uh, hopefully we can end up uh, on a nice Oregon Duck victory representing the Pac-12. Pac-12 has been kicking ass and taking names. Seems like since it's the last year of the Pac-12 existence, we're trying to go out with a bang, and we're trying to bring that electricity, right? And uh, Pac-12, you know, not only in, you know, men's college football, you know, dominating, but they're doing pretty damn good for the men's and the women's in the college journey, baby. Be electric, baby. Let's go. Let's go, baby. Take care of your mental health, y'all. Let's go. Thumbnail turned out really good. I was a little concerned, too, about the images for Creighton and Oregon, but I was like, uh, if I end up working on it earlier instead of, you know, waiting to the last minute, that would probably be the best bet and, and started working on it after, like, uh, an early morning walk with my pup. So I didn't want to take any chances of not being able to convert images of the players, and then all of a sudden I'm late for the game. So Dana Altman, baby. Greg McDermott. Let's go. Career comparison as a Creighton head coach. 
Dana Altman, 94, 2010, 2010 to present, 327 and 170s pick. So these guys are familiar with each other, and they both coached at Creighton before uh, Dana Altman took the job at Oregon. So it's always kind of fitting, you know, when you end up having a, a scenario like that, you know, a coach going against his former team that he used to coach on. And uh, I think that Dana Altman doesn't get enough credit. Now, do the Ducks win national championships for the men's or women's uh, in basketball, you know, every year or at all? No, you know, but I feel that we're getting a little bit closer. And with COVID, you know, Sabrina and Osco, I think that with the women's side, I think we would have won the Natty. We would have made the final four. And I really honestly believe we would have made the championship game with Sabrina that year, but coulda, woulda, shoulda with COVID kind of ruined everything, right? So they had to cancel it. But uh, the football team is better than the basketball team. But the basketball team is always going to overachieve. You know, we had Luke Jackson, Luke Rittenauer, Freddie Jones. You know, every once in a while, you know, the Ducks will go a little bit further than people anticipate. And uh, even though we're heavy, heavy underdogs, you know, in this particular matchup, a three versus an 11, I think uh, we like our chances. And again, if Kusnard can throw up 28 or more, we don't have to put the pressure on and say, hey, you got to put up 40 like you did against South Carolina, your former team. But if you can put up 28 or more, and if he can get as close to a triple double or double double and you know a high number on that third category 28 10 and 8 28 uh, 9 and 7 something you know that's a pretty good well-rounded stat line overall uh, that's definitely going to give us a chance and uh, hopefully Dana Altman's got the uh, you know the proper setup you know with the starting lineup and the bench rotation for minutes but I'm definitely excited about the matchup let's go and even though Oregon beat Arizona, you already knew, you know, Arizona, based off their dominance throughout the year, that they were going to move past the loss to Oregon and then find a way. So, now, of course, everyone wants to win their, you know, respective division and have the title of the Big Ten or the Pac-12 or the ACC or SEC. But if you still get an opportunity to go to the dance, you know, there's still a good opportunity to see what damage you can do at that particular moment. So... For a birth to the Sweet 16, number 11, Oregon Ducks, 24 and 11, versus number three, Creighton Blue Jays at 24 and 9. And it uh, looks like we'll be getting started here in the next eight or nine minutes. Let's go. Oh, it's all good. You know, if you want to stay, you know, you can stay. If you want to play some video games and do your thing, you know, and do whatever you need to do to be able to get your mental health uh, the best position that it can be. And again, normally we're not going to be doing a whole lot. I mean, I'll do, you know, football, basketball, baseball, hockey, you know, wrestling, AEW, WWE. We'll do everything on the channel, even boxing or UFC. Uh, but usually basketball will be on kind of the back burner. You know, we won't be doing as much until we get to the NBA playoffs or something like this for March Madness. Because I feel like regular season college basketball is a little boring, kind of like the NBA regular season. But once we get to the games being important and you're actually playing for something, then, you know, more audience members are going to be, you know, watching, especially if you filled out a bracket. Uh, and also on the NBA side, once we go to the playoffs, things are going to be ramped up defensively. And uh, that's one thing that kind of irks me when I watch regular season games, just the lack of effort and defense for uh, the college hoop side as well as the NBA side. But uh, we're in March Madness now, so I'm definitely ready. Let's go. Maple Leaf 6, Oilers 3. Wow, that's a big win. Was that on the road for uh, the Maple Leafs or was that at home? Yeah. And again, most people have Creighton winning, which they should. You know, I think 80 to 90 percent of the bracket, you know, have Creighton winning, you know, and I get it. You know, we're an 11 seed. They're a three seed. You know, it's going to be tough, but it's not going to be necessarily impossible. And uh, we'll see if we can uh, bring our A game here tonight. Let's go. Oh, they were at home. Nice. Shout out to all the people watching on Twitter slash X. Thank you, Matt, with the share on the Twitter slash X, as well as Megan and Sarah and Cyberpunk. And for everyone that does that, it definitely does make a difference. And I assume I'm going to be the only one uh, on social media doing this game. I highly doubt anyone else is doing this. So let's go. Who did you want me to throw up? Spring ball. Nice. I'll have to mark some of those on my calendar because I got a scout for sure. Let's 
go. Kate Martin. All right, let's do that. We got you. I actually watched a little bit of the uh, matchup this morning when I got back from walking the pub. I can actually find one that's uh, worthy. Sixth-year guard, Kate Martin, for senior day. Okay, let me see if I can pull this one up. Uh, maybe that one won't. Let's see. We got to go through probably a few. Is Kate Martin uh, considered the second-best player behind Caitlin Clark on Iowa? Or what, what is her role on the team since you watch more games, Sarah, than me? Uh, Iowa is your team. Caitlin Clark is a phenom, and it's good that, you know, he's kind of showing out and breaking out, you know, to bring more eyes to the college hoop scene, men's and women's. And let's see if we can get you in Iowa. I don't think uh, they have a spinning logo, but let's see if I can get you an Iowa Hawkeye logo here. There we go. They're really letting them warm up and get set up there. All right, tip-off is going to be here in just a few more minutes. It was supposed to be at 640 Pacific, but the other game got uh, extended into overtime. So you know, I think they just wanted to let the players, you know, just shoot around and get a little bit more comfortable. Since this is the last game of the night, there is no more games after this one. So let's go. Three seed Creighton, number 11, Oregon. Let's go. Sixth woman of the year for the Big Ten. Okay, so she comes off the bench then. Double double today. Nice. Any matchups surprise you today, Sarah? Based off the, uh, you know, the matchups. Anything that was a, a little eye popping to you, based off your bracket or anything there? Now, obviously, we got to throw up the best player in college hoops right now, man or woman, and Caitlin Clark. So I definitely will be watching uh, maybe not full games until we get further along, you know, but I'm definitely going to tune in to see how she plays. And I don't expect her to play bad in any game. I saw her take a big elbow to the face, uh, which they ended up ruling not a dirty player on purpose. I know that the other uh, girl was kind of running through the screen and whatnot, but she didn't really need to put her forearm up like that. I'm not sure if it was on purpose or not, but it looked a little half intentional. You know, it looked like she tried to play it off and it wasn't, you know, on purpose, but you know, there's no purpose of you having to fling your forearm up that high towards her face, but she's a fighter. It didn't phase her one bit. And uh, even her dad was yelling at her, you know, from the crowd just to be quiet. You know, you can't complain about shit. You're the best player in college hoops, men's or women's. You got to be able to take the punishment. Everyone's going to come after you, you know, as the best player in the country. They're going to try to injure you. They're going to try to talk shit to you. They're going to try to rattle you. You just got to be you. And uh, we already know that she's going to be, you know, uh, the boss out there. And uh, I'm definitely excited to see her progression as we get further along in the tournament. And I really do hope that they make the Final Four or even the championship game on the women's side because then it'll give, you know, guys another incentive to be like, okay, let's see what the real deal is, you know, with this Caitlin Clark if you haven't watched her play at all. And, uh, you know, she's the next, you know, best thing since sliced bread. You know, obviously on the women's side, she'll be the number one pick in the draft. And, you know, she's got an opportunity if she can stay healthy Healthy, she may go down in history as one of the best female basketball players to play professionally when it's all said and done. You know, at this point, you know, as far as upside, I think a lot of people think that she could be a top five player when it's all said and done. But some people think that she could be as best, you know, or as high as being, you know, arguably number one, number two, number three. And that's that's a lot of high praise for someone that hasn't even stepped on a professional court yet. But when if you've actually followed her career, uh, it wouldn't surprise me one bit. All right, baby. 
Kyle in the building. What's good? No problem, brother. I try to get back to everybody on Instagram or, uh, you know, I have a, a private account on there. But again, if anyone follows me on Instagram, I usually try to get back to them, uh, you know, at that particular time. Baltimore's resident Oregon fan. Let's go, baby. Let's go. Who did you pick in your bracket? Did you did you pick Oregon just because of being an Oregon fan or did you pick Creighton like a lot of people did? I know there's a lot of differential being an 11 seed and a 3 seed, but I feel sometimes the seeding is a little overrated. You know, it's really how they've been playing as of late. So if you look at the last five games the Ducks have played, you know, we've won every every five, you know, all five, right? But, uh, you know, if you look at Creighton, they dropped the game two games ago, 78-73. So they won three games, they dropped one to Providence, and then they beat Arkansas. So... You know, again, you know, seeding matters to me when it's like one versus 16. But after that, when it's two and 15 and everything, you know, lower than that, anything is possible. You're not going to get a 16 beating a one, you know, that often or at all. Like it might be once in like what, five to 10 years or, or 20 years, maybe you'll get a one seed that loses to a 16. It's not likely. But we have seen 15s beat twos, right? We've seen that happen. We've seen 12s beat fives. So, I mean, this is not that much different from a 12 seed beating a 5 seed, so. Yeah, see? And that's the thing. You know, a lot of people are trying to use their head. You can't be necessarily falling in love with your heart, even though you might be a fan of, of a you know a school, you know, for the basketball or for the football. But I don't blame you. You know, I think a lot of, you know, Oregon fans, you know, if you're trying to win your bracket, uh, you know, there's a lot on the line. So you might have loyalty to the team. But if you don't really think they can do it, then. But also, too, you know, when, before, when people made the bracket, I don't think anyone thought that, well, let's be honest. I don't think a lot of people thought they would even get past South Carolina. And I don't think a lot of people thought that Jermaine would put up 40 against his former team. So I think if you were going to you know, do the bracket over again after seeing what he did against his former team, then I think uh, a lot of those people that picked Creighton, they have flipped their pick now to Oregon based on how they played. But again, if Jermaine plays well and gets 28 points or more, we're going to win. Uh, if he doesn't play well, uh, it could get ugly, and it could get ugly early. So I'm hoping uh, that we can find a way. Hybrid in the building. What's good? Kentucky? Uh, yeah, Kentucky is the Dallas Cowboys of college hoops. It's a Drake curse, my guy. You know, anytime Drake is going to lean towards a, a particular team, you know, he gets some picks right, but he, there's definitely a little bit of that Drake curse as well. And speaking of Drake and J. Cole, you know, it's nice to be able to see, uh, you know, some of these hip hop artists, you know, come up with new music, mixtapes and whatnot. And then obviously you're going to end up getting a little bit of beef. Uh, you know, who's the best rapper that's alive right now? Some people think it's Drake. Some people think it's J. Cole. I, I got to listen to some, you know, early new music out of J. Cole that'll be dropping. Kendrick Lamar will obviously respond thinking that he's the greatest. Uh, it's just nice to be able to see when new music drops, you know, from those three. Because uh, obviously, you know, being a, a hip hop guy, you know, you're not going to get new music that often out of Drake or J. Cole or Kendrick. And uh, it's always a good moment when you get a little bit of beef and a little bit of squabbling on who the, the greatest is at the moment. A lot of stuff on my timeline there. You know, and, and you, you, the thing is also, too, is Kendrick is so fucking creative rep representing California and the West Coast. And obviously, J. Cole is a wizard. And, uh, you know, some people love Drake. Some people hate him. And when it's all said and done, you can't take away, you know, all of the awards and all the accolades that he's put in on the R&B side and on the hip hop and the rap side. All right, baby, here we go. Let's go, baby. Let's get to 100 and donos, baby. Well, we're talking about regular season, right? Dallas Cowboys in the regular season, okay? And what happens when they go to the playoffs? Nothing, you know, and they haven't really been able to do anything. It is actually a good comparison. Yeah, and Kentucky has won some, but after coaching changes, I'm saying at that point, you know, we're not talking, we're not going back to Jamal Mashburn and actually when they had good players, when they actually were winning. But in the last few years, you know, they, they have been kind of choke artists, you know, based off uh, their reputation. Let's go, baby. Reflect in the building, what's good? Go Ducks. Let's go. 
All right, Blue Jays. All right, Ducks. Oh, Trey Alexander with the first bucket. And obviously we'll have the scoreboard up above. Everyone's feed is a little bit different depending on where you're watching. If you're actually watching through, uh, you know, TBS, if you're watching it through TBS.com, if you're watching it through streaming site, uh, it, you know, there's multiple ways to watch this particular, also the March Madness app linked through your cable or satellite provider. So uh, I'll have the scoreboard up above that'll be linked through ESPN. But what I'm seeing, you know, maybe a little bit different, you know, based on how you guys are watching. Let's go. Right. Oh, nice pass. In and out, no good. Come on, Ducks. This is going to be tough. Deep three is good. Damn, 5-0. Creighton, even though it says 5-2 up above. A little jumper. There we go. Nice. Nice bucket from the freshman from West Lynn. Air ball. As they say he got a piece. Push the ball. Get to get the ball to Jermaine, baby. A little pick and roll. Set him up. Oregon looks a little lost out there. 20 footer, no good. Creighton with the board. Pump fake. I'm interested to see what kind of setup on defense that we're going to end up getting. What do they got? A little 1 3 1 zone. Oh, good defense there. Ducks with the steal. Push it. No go to go, Jermaine. Off the glass, no good. Has to have a little bit more touch there. 5-2, Creighton. And we'll let them shoot threes. You want to shoot threes, go right ahead. The only way we're going to be able to you know, win this game is with you know, great defense, and we're going to have to out-rebound Creighton as well. No good. Why are we shooting threes out there? Come on. Deep three. Man, Creighton is just firing left and right, left and right. Slow it down a little bit. Oh, that was a foul. Hopefully he's okay. Duck players down. Dante, get up, baby. Ducks looking fresh with their uh, shoes and the jerseys. And the shorts, let's go. I saw some horrific stat uh, about Nebraska, about not being able to, you know, win a matchup uh, in the tourney for the men's or women's. And uh, like, and so, you know, I don't know the exact how many games that have been played, but that's tough. I'll have to go back to my feed to see how many uh, games it was, but it's not a, not a good streak to be a part of. Creighton with a steal. Dive on the floor. Let's go. Outlet. Pump fake. Oh, wide open three. No good. Rebound. And a foul. Fuck. Yeah, Creighton definitely looks a little bit faster out there. Come on, baby. Let's go. Come on, Ducks. First free throw is good. And then McDermott. Free throw is good. Let's go. Come on, Oregon. You got Tennessee winning it all? 
Well, uh, how did you come to that conclusion, Kyle? You just figure a lot of the uh, the top tier teams are going to get upset. Yeah, we'll see what happens. I mean, uh, as far as football is concerned, I mean, it should be, you know, Oregon and Ohio State and, until Michigan ends up getting a better coach. You know, I'm not sure if they're going to be able to find someone like Harbaugh anytime soon, and that's going to affect recruiting and whatnot. But I would assume it'll be Oregon and Ohio State first or second in the Big Ten for a couple of years while we wait for the other schools to kind of catch up recruiting-wise. Here we go. Gustard, baby. Most people don't watch college basketball, though, during the regular season. I was just wondering if you actually watched any of them during the regular season. But I haven't heard anybody, you know, pick them to win it all. So I was just curious. Offensive board there is good. Come on, Ducks. Come on, Dana. Get this team rolling. Let's go. Three, no good. We got nobody down there for the boards either. Let's go. Also, you got to look at like history too, like, you know, with teams. Like, when's the last time that Tennessee men's uh, won anything? You know, in, in football, you know, uh, I mean, obviously with like T. Martin, you know, after Peyton Manning back in the day, you know, but as far as basketball is concerned, I mean, women's is different, you know, compared to the men's, especially with like recruiting. There we go. Ashworth, no good. Nice board. Go, oh, Dante. Let's go. 9 6, Creighton. And it feels like we're a little slow and, and we're, you know, uh, kind of running around with our heads cut off a little bit, kind of excited out there. But look at Creighton, one for eight from deep, you know. And I know that we're gonna, if we're gonna win this game, we're gonna have to go inside, slow the game down a little bit. But we don't need to shoot as many threes, uh, you know, as Creighton. Megan with a fiver, appreciate you. Oregon could win the Big Ten the first year. What are you talking about? Have you have you been paying attention to recruiting? You know, based off you know transfers and recruiting, you know Oregon could win it right away. You know, based off the people that were are returning, based off the people that we got to transfer, you know, based off you know you know high school you know players that are waiting their turn now. So, I mean, I, you'll see. I would be highly shocked if it's not Ohio State or Oregon in the top two in the Big Ten next year. And then, you know, that would go for, you know, because you got to look, USC doesn't have a defense. Washington, you know, has to replace their coach. So they're not going to be the same team without Michael Penix Jr., right? Michigan, you know, they're still going to have some players, but they're going to have players they are going to, you know, decommit and they're going to transfer because Harbaugh's not there. You know, so if that's all being said, you know, and then you still got Penn State, who typically is halfway decent here and there, and a few others, you know, Wisconsin and Iowa. But, I mean, if you're looking at based off how the rosters are sitting at this moment, I mean, it's pretty clear that, uh, you know, Oregon and Ohio State got the, the best teams as of right now, you know, going in. But, again, things could change, you know, uh, you know, from now until the beginning of the season. But we will see. I appreciate you. I have Dawah. Let me know what you want to do for photos, and I got you. It doesn't have to be basketball related. Stacks on stacks, racks on racks. Little cactus jack. Bang bang. Five Dawah. Appreciate you. Ninety-five to go. Thank you so much. Much appreciated. I don't know if you're really a duck fan. You sound kind of like a hater. Like we have no chance. You know, like I said, it, it takes time to be able to build a championship contender. But just because Oregon, you know, hasn't been able to win a natty yet, if you actually look at the trajectory, you know, no Nick Saban, no Harbaugh. You know, the best coaches that are left, you know, are what, Kirby Smart, right? Sarkeesian from Texas, you know, Ryan Day from Ohio State, and then obviously our guy, you know, at Oregon. So, 
I mean, it's not like the college football landscape is going to have those other guys still there. And the SEC isn't as strong, you know, as it was. So, like I said, the Pac-12 was arguably the best conference this year. And again, even though they didn't win at all, you can kind of see that the Pac-12 and the Big Ten, you know, they won it this year with Michigan. But, it, you know, the, the, the changing of the guard, instead of having the SEC being the most dominant team in football year in and year out with Bama and Georgia, it, th- it looks like things are starting to shift a little bit. You know, and obviously we're going to have the college football playoff, and, and, you know, and we're going to have, a, you know, a, a time to be able to get there. But I wouldn't be shocked, you know, at some point or another if Oregon ends up winning a national title in the next 10 or 15 years. And hell, it could end up happening within the, you know, the next five. It all depends on recruiting and it really depends on what coach stays. You know, whatever head coach stays the longest to be able to gain more momentum, that's going to really benefit the, you know, those particular you know players and, and keeping that loyalty because we know there is no loyalty in college football with coaches or with players. You know, that's facts. All right, Dalla Hala, let's go. Stacks on stacks, racks on racks. A little Cactus Jack, bang bang. Especially getting Gabriel and Dante Moore and you know everyone else. You know, we still need to go out there and prove it. And obviously defense is gonna be key. But you know, since Michigan and Alabama might, you know, take a step back slightly compared to having Harbaugh and Saban, not saying that Michigan and Washington are gonna be garbage, uh, or Michigan or Alabama are gonna be garbage, because I don't think they will be. But you know, you gotta think recruiting wise, you're gonna lose some pieces if Saban isn't in the building, and you're gonna lose pieces if Harbaugh isn't in the building. That's just that. $10, 90 to go. Get that board. And I'll get some photos up here for Megan and Reflect here once we get to commercial break. Ducks fighting back. Stay on them. Nice jumper, Shireman. Will Rogers, Jonah Coleman. Oh, boy. Let's go. You know it. You know it, baby. Little pick and roll, pick and pop. Oh, air ball, no good. Come on, Oregon, get back. We need to get Jermaine the ball a hell of a lot more if we want to be able to be in this. Oh, easy layup missed. And Jermaine got two fouls, and you know, anytime you you get a player like that into foul trouble, it, you know, we don't want him to get three. So I get it, but oh, baby, monster dunk! Let's go. Dante, baby, he might have to step up for us. Nice pass. Get up there. In and out, no good. Dante's got all the boards, baby. It's gonna be a game of runs, you know, just like every game is in the tourney. You know, it's not gonna be lopsided, even though it could end up getting lopsided at some point in the game, but at least in these early stages, uh, it should be pretty close. Nice jumper. Let's go. Isaiah in the building, what's good? I mean, especially if we can show a little bit of heart and fight, you know, when Jermaine is on the bench, you know, that's just gonna motivate Dante and the others to step up. That looked like a travel. Nice board by Creighton. Damn. Our, D, our, our help side defense is terrible. You got to be able to slide over there a little bit better. But again, we are an 11 seed. It's not like, a, you know, Oregon is a one seed or a two seed or even a three seed like Creighton. I get it. We're limited on the talent that we have. I mean, at least it's not uh, like an Illinois Duquesne score right now. Golly. Illinois up by 30. 
Open three. There we go. Got it up at 13. Let's go. Tell Stad. No good. Rebound. Shell Stad, the freshman, Jackson from Westland. That's not too far from me. Maybe 15 minutes from me. 15, 20. Come on, Dante. A little hook shot. No good. I like the fight that I'm seeing. Move your feet. Rebound. Said same team, fellas. Come on. I like the effort, though. You know, eh, you know, at least that we're hustling out there. We're knotted up at 13, baby. Let's go. 9.42 left in the first. Let's go. All right, what do we want to do for photos uh, for Megan and Reflect? You got anything that you guys want to see? Just comment below and let me know, and I'll sprinkle them in. Mariners with another dub. Looking good. We're getting closer to the MLB regular season, which is nice. We got NASCAR Cup Series racing tomorrow at 1230. Circuit of the Americas. I'll be watching that. And then uh, Canadians versus Kraken at 6 p.m. tomorrow. So we'll probably end up streaming that tomorrow uh, unless we end up deciding to do something else. I mean, I wouldn't mind, you know, uh, possibly doing, you know, something else. But, it, you know, it has to be, you know, worth it, you know, on all phases. So. Okay, we can do some debt. Let's do that. Good choice. You can probably find uh, vintage stuff like we've had in the past. Some old school black and white for the Huskies. Commercials go by pretty quick, though, so I don't know how many I'll be able to squeeze in, but I'll try. Uh, we can't, yeah, make sure we got to put the dub up there. All right, let me see if I can squeeze in one more. Oh, debt left. Let's go. Yes. Oh, he's been fantastic. Are you kidding me? That's been the bright surprise in NASCAR. I watch every race. Hell, I even sometimes watch uh, the trucks in the Xfinity series. Uh, I watch a little bit of everything. You know, like I said, the only thing that I'm not going to watch as much of now, just because of my love for NASCAR and like baseball and, and the NHL, as, as for like the NBA game until we get deeper into the playoffs and whatnot, because I have so many other things that I'm keeping up with. But uh, he's been awesome, and I, I wouldn't be surprised uh, if he overachieves and he ends up winning a race, you know, or two this season or next season, like he, he's kind of, you know, getting there, you know, it's like sometimes uh, you're going to need a little bit of a break, you know, a lot of wrecks and you can kind of move towards the front. And then if you can get yourself in position late, you might be able to steal one. And, uh, you know, he's been actually pretty good at the beginning of the season, much better, I think, than anyone anticipated. I think a lot of people anticipated him being, you know, maybe like in the top 15 here and there but i don't think people uh, thought that he would have like uh, top five or top 10 finishes yet so always cool to see the next uh, wave of talent you know step up let's go open three no good Come on, baby. Here 
Rebound. Come on, Ducks. Only way that you're going to compete in this matchup is good defense, and we have to out-rebound. There we go. Off the glass. I like that. I like that. Come on, Jermaine. Four points. We need to, we need to, you to get as close to 20 to 28 as possible. Second half will have to be big for him, but also getting in two fouls early and going to the bench didn't help his cause. Ironman in and out. Offensive board. Come on, Ducks. Five offensive boards for Creighton Blue Jays. That's unacceptable. Good D. Get on him. Ah. All right, Shireman, I see you. Come on, Oregon. We're hanging in there. Isaac Trout coming in. Come on, baby. Only down by two. 7.43 left in the first. Let's go. Nice position. You know, on Dante. Dante, six points and six boards. I like what I'm seeing from him. Dude, these guys are shooting threes on Creighton Blue Jays like it's NBA Jam or NBA Hang Time. They give no fucks. Like, imagine if Creighton actually just went inside and, and, and tried to dominate you know, in the paint. This game would probably be Creighton up by 10, maybe even more than that. But I guess if that's their style of play and they're going to win and, and you know and lose and uh, they're going to live and die by the three, I guess it, you know that's going to play into the Ducks' favor, though, if they keep shooting like the way that they have been. 19-17, great. Let's go. Nice. Reflect, you got anything that you want me to bring up? Anything uh, Mariner-related, Huskies-related, you let me know. Woo, baby. This is what I need to be able to do is make this a side hustle on top of it. Thumbnail turned out great. Come on, Jermaine. Let's go, Kusnar. We need you, baby. All right, see if I can find any other appropriate debt lefts. to all the people watching on Twitter slash X as well as watching on YouTube. Love you. Appreciate you. Like, sub, donate, comment, share. Ooh, that's a good one. We got to hit you with the Husky though. Wow, that's a cool one. It's a cool graphic. Hell yeah, we'll do we'll do the George Kirby, absolutely. Let's go. Yeah, great role player. You know, everyone will talk about, you know, Gary Payton the glove and Sean Kemp the rain man, but you know, you always have to have that third guy, the three amigos, the three stooges. You know, you gotta have that third guy to be able to step up 
when the one or the two ends up getting injured, hurt, or in foul trouble. Someone that you can rely on defensively and offensively and to be a smart player. And that's exactly who Detlef Shrimp was on every team that he played on. And sometimes, you know, he might have not even been the uh, third best, you know, on some of the other teams that he was on. So. But obviously, when you're playing with Gary Payton and Sean Kemp, you know, Altman is pissed. Let's go. Get on the glass, baby. Boxing out. It's all about effort, too. You know, and you know, and again, if they're going to be shooting these deep threes, there's no excuse. You got to close out. You know, but again, you can't have all these open threes, even though they haven't been making a whole lot of them. But unexcusable for them to be able to get a rebound and a putback with three ducks right there under the basket. Light a fire in their ass. Let's go, Dana Altman. Dante, nice footwork. Because the more second chance points you, because on if Creighton actually just attacked the inside, they would be up by probably eight or ten points right now. So I'll take it if they want to live and die by the three. But if they're going to live and die by the three and they're going to be ice cold like they have been so far, you can't give up the second chance points and those, you know, rebounds one after another after another. Brutal. Kills momentum in Uncle Mo. I've never seen a team shoot so many threes. My goodness. Oquendo with the foul. Let's go. And then if we can get hot, you know, on our threes, you know, I don't think we're ever going to be pumping up like seven three attempts in a row, you know, but again, you know, we'll pick and choose our moments, but, you know, with Jermaine, with Kusnard and with Dante, you know, those are going to be the strengths. So, you know, go inside. You know, the last thing you want to do is, uh, you know, give the other team an advantage, you know, and that that's going to be something that uh, we'll have to keep an eye on as we get into the second half as well. My, my only concern is going to be for Jackson Shellstad from Westland, the freshman. Six foot, 170. He loves to, you know, shoot the three, but we can't get too trigger happy from deep. Quendo and uh, Kusnard with two fouls each already. Let's go, baby. Which one? Reflect. Let's go. Come on, baby. Dante down low, hook shot. Off the... You gotta have a little bit more touch on that. I'd have a little bit more touch on the glass. Use the backboard. Find the angle, you know? And it'll be interesting also, too, if we play man-to-man -man or if we go zone uh, in the second half as well. Looks like uh, Dana Altman is kind of switching it up from a 2-3, a 1-3-1, one, one, and man so far from what I've seen. And then you could always go to a 2-3 or a 3-2 off the glass. God, we don't. We, he's just too big big now I know who you're talking about yep too much size I saw the highlight reel of that chick uh, that Sarah was talking about that put up that like 40 point game uh, she was like 18 for 20, you know, down low. And she's just bigger than everyone else. She's like the Shaquille O'Neal of, of college women's hoops. You know, she is like so big, and but she's skilled. You know, even though, uh, you know, she's a little bit thicker, you know, as, as like a center, uh, you know, than some of the other girls that she's going up against. But hell, if you've got the big shoulders and, you know, uh, you know you've got that good center of gravity, it's going to be kind of tough to be able to match up if you're that much bigger than everyone else. And you actually have a good skill set with the basketball. Good basketball IQ. But I was impressed. I had to go back and watch the highlight reel. Woo! Let's go. Eating up. Yes. Yes. Audie Crooks. She's incredible. You know what I mean? And for her size, sometimes, you know, the girls that are a little bit thicker and bigger aren't, sometimes aren't as athletic. And then they're a little slow and a little loppy. And not her. You know, she can do anything, you know, that someone that's 20, 30 pounds, you know, lighter than her. But it's like her basketball IQ is on point. And she's got really good touch down low. She's got good post moves. 
almost unguardable. And I haven't seen too many females I have felt that have been that size and height that have been like unguardable down low in the post. Come on, baby. Only down by one. Let's go. Finish strong. We're going to have to double team 11. Alk Brenner. We got a fucking double team Ryan. Ryan is as tall as shit. I gotta look to see how tall he is. He's gotta be like 771. Let me look. 71270 from Missouri. God damn, he's big. I, I figured he was big. Yeah, I was gonna say if Oregon was gonna be down by like 10 points after we're done, you know, we have to keep it within six points. You know, six points or less, and then we're gonna have a good chance for a nice run in the beginning of the second half. But so far, so good. I like what I'm seeing. The golf runner, golly, 7 1 270. I mean, we don't got anyone that can match up with that size. So that means that we're gonna have to be uh, you know, smart, you know, with some double teams and whatnot, but we don't wanna get our guys in foul trouble. But uh, Dante 6'11", but he's 210, so the weight difference is huge. You know, it, you know, he got two inches on him. You know, and then what? what what's the? Let me go back. I got to look at Cal Brenner. Wow, so he's got two inches on him and 60 pounds. So if you got two inches on someone and you're 6'11", you know, and, and you're like 210 compared to someone that's 7'1", 270. You know, you're going to have to use your body in different ways, hedge the defender. You're going to have to have some, you know, help on the weak side, you know, and you're going to have to go down and double down low, you know, have guys kind of come in and try to knock the ball loose. So, but, you, but with all things considered, you know, being an 11 seed, uh, we're playing great. You know, all things considered with, you know, Kuznard with the foul trouble and whatnot, Dante has kind of filled the gap in the void. And uh, let me see if I can throw up a quick George Kirby, baby. I'll get a few more once we get into uh, intermission and whatnot of the first half. Appreciate you. Reflect, my dude. George Kirby is a vibe, baby. Right, can I squeeze in one more George? MLB season right around the corner. Super excited. Let's go, baby. Go M's. Go! Got it up at 30. I like this, baby. NC Dolly in the building. What's good, brother? I missed you. How are you? Five days away from baseball, baby. I'm, I'm ready. I feel baseball season has been taking forever. Like, I, I feel like the Cactus League, uh, you know, Grapefruit League, it, it like, even though it went the regular amount of days and time, I feel it's like been dragging because we've just been anticipating baseball so much for a few of us in the room, you know, hardcore fans and whatnot of a, a few teams. So. All right, let's go. Finish strong. Less than two minutes to go. Oh, Ducks with the lead, baby. Let's go. First lead. Let's go, Dana Altman. He said, go Mets. He said, go Mets. Sarah says, go Cardinals. Me and Reflex said, go Mariners with Megan. Let's go. Let's go, baby. Kutznard. Heating up, baby. I like it. Let's go. You know who's electric? Oh, baby. You know it is. Let's go. And then once we get a lead, you know, we have to play like we, you know, have a lead, but we want to make sure, like, you know, take no prisoners, you know, because, again, we already know how good this Creighton team is. 
You got to step on the gas and never let up. In and out, no good. And a lot of these open threes, Crane would be normally making. They normally wouldn't be shooting this bad. I mean, it's one thing if you've got a defender or someone's closing out, but more than half of their three-point attempts have been uncontested. So we've been getting a little lucky here. Uh, you know, we could easily be down by 10 or 15 points right now if half of those threes would have dropped for Creighton. And thank God they haven't. Let's go. 32-30. Docs, baby. Oh, Dana Altman's going to get on here. We got to get a Dana Altman photo. Oh, baby, Dana. Yeah. Sweet 16, let's go. I like it, I like it. All those people that got Creighton on their bracket, they're just hoping that the Ducks fail. And all the people that decided to go for the underdog, so far so good. Oh, baby, let's go. Shout out to all the people watching on Twitter slash X as well as in the room. Like, sub, donate, comment, share. Help your boy out. It helps out with analytics tremendously. I finally got done watching uh, Next Level Chef. It made me feel like this. Now I'm on to uh, Master Chef Junior with Gordon Ramsay. And I still got a few other shows to catch up on and a, a long walk with Paisley after this is done. But gosh, man, you know, Gordon Ramsay, uh, those shows are so entertaining for me. But I'll tell you what, one thing, if you end up watching, you know, uh, Next Level Chef, Master Chef, Master Chef Junior, or any of those, make sure you're doing it with your stomach either being full or you're actually snacking while you're watching because there's nothing worse when you're actually hungry and you're 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 watching them you know come up with these amazing creations uh and, and then you look to your you know you look to your plate and you're, you're eating some kind of peanut butter and jelly with chips and they got some you know amazing steaks or filet mignon or whatever that they're cooking on but uh it's been a good season in that they still have a few more episodes but i finally got caught up so and I like the uh, concept of next level chef with the three different levels in the basement and the mid level and the top level. Um, very entertaining. Yeah. Nice. How's everything going in your life? Everything going okay? Mental health so decent? Hopefully everything's going good for you. Bracket is still good, Kyle. So far so good for Tennessee. And then it would be Oregon in Tennessee. Wouldn't that be ironic if Oregon ends up beating the team that you had to win it all? But we have to get past Creighton first. And we can't get too, our, uh, too, too much ahead of ourselves there. $10, 90 to go. Five for 21 from three. What, that's ridiculous for Creighton. Rebound. Dante's a good rebounder. It kind of gives me like uh, kind of Kevin Willis vibes. You know what I mean? Like when you watch him, you know, it's not going to be the smoothest, you know, and, and sometimes the motion is a little robotic, you know, but again, you're going to get the hustle. You're going to get the grit and he's going to be able to throw down rebound dunk. He's going to be able to get offensive board and he'll be able to get the easy buckets down low. Just got to have that big presence down there. Rebound. All right, 36-34. Creighton only up by two at halftime. 
Good effort by Oregon. And also we got a little lucky for Creighton being so ice cold from deep. Otherwise we would be down by probably 10 to 15 points right now. Only down by two and a half. All right, let me know what you guys want to do for photos and I got you. What else do you want to see, Megan? What else do you want to see reflect? I got you. Thirty-six, thirty-four, and we're at halftime, baby. Let me see this replay of this last ten seconds here. Yeah, I can't have Ashworth hit that damn three late. But I'll still take it based off their shooting percentage. So they ended up finishing what? Six for 23 from deep? And then what's Oregon? Oregon is what? Four for 10? So we're 40%. They're shooting 26%. Kusnard with 15. We need him to get to 28 or more, and he's already pacing for 30. So, so far, so good. Started off slow, got two fouls, got, got you know, sent to the bench, got back in, lit a fire into the rest of the players' asses, and then uh, we're ready. You know, we're there. We're only down by two. And if our defense and closing out was a little bit better, we would be tied or ahead. So. Let's see what other photos that we can come up with here. How long is halftime here? I wonder. How long is halftime? 10 minutes? With these March Madness games? Or is it slightly longer? It's more George Kirby. Anything else you want to see reflect? You got another player that you want? All the uh, concern that we had early on is now all pretty much gone. I got a throwback at Kirby. You'll like this one, Elon University. And we ain't talking Musk. Look at this throwback. Oh, baby. Yeah, Ken Zone, baby. Elon University. Like, like you know, how many people even know where the hell that's at? I mean, you could be a diehard and have no clue. You never know where you can find amazing talent, you know? That would be a cool jersey to own if you could end up finding it as a Kirby fan, like finding the Elon jersey. And he, he would probably autograph it if he saw it at a game. He'd be like, oh my God, where did you get that? First half is done, 36-34 Creighton, and we're just going to be throwing up some photos for the people that have donated and supported the brand. And then if there's anything else that we can come up with after that, uh, we'll throw some of those up, and then we'll get right back into the action as soon as we're done from uh, halftime. Elon. They throw up a can zone and we'll get something for NC Jolly. There you go. Most people, you know, are not going to know where that's at. So. North Carolina. NC Jolly. 
Four nine and eyes. I need to stop betting on Kansas. Do you have Kansas winning at all? Who do you have in your bracket, NT Dolly? NT Dolly with a fighter. What do you want to see for a photo, NT Dolly? I'm going to throw up a can zone for my boy Reflect. And then anything else Megan's looking for if she's still in the room. And then we'll get you some photos up. It can be football related, NT Dolly. If you want something NFL related, you know, a favorite player, favorite team, you let me know what you're looking at. It could be basketball related. You know, it doesn't have to be necessarily March Madness related. I got you. Jacks on track, racks on rack. Little cactus jack. Bang, bang, five dollar all of Appreciate you. You let me know what you want for photos, and I got you. 15, 85 to go. What you want for a photo, NC? I got you. All right, let me see if I get a can going in here. It's all dirty dome. Oh, I don't know if I got a Ric Flair impression. <laughs> Let's go, baby. There'll be a whole lot of uh, this pose. Let's go. And you, you, I, I sent you that uh, that graphic of how good we were doing late late last night. You got that from me, so. All right, I got you. Well, I'm glad that Oregon isn't getting blown out by 20 and it's like not even watchable. I'm really happy that uh, they put in a lot of effort and, you know, they're only down by two and that's pretty fucking good considering Creighton is a three seed. So we have a chance. But it feels like, you know, if we are going to win the matchup, uh, you know, we're going to have to play really good inside. And, uh, you know, you're going to have to have a dominant performance out of Cousinard and Dante. And if they can play great uh, and we can combine for, you know, what are they at right now combined? They're at 23 combined. If we can get to 45 points combined, 45 or 50 points combined, something like in that, you know, if we can get Dante up to 15 to 19, and then if we can get Kuznard up to 26 to 32, uh, you know, we're going to have a good shot at the end. Yeah, that's much better than starting off the season one and eleven or one and ten. One win, ten or eleven losses, and the worst record uh, you know in the whole preseason for the MLB. We've definitely turned it around, and I love it. All right, let's take a look at NT Dolly's final four. He's got UNC, Arizona, and then Tennessee and Purdue. Interesting. find something. Let's see if I can find a Tennessee spinning logo to match you. All right. All right, let me see here let me see what I can find.
Obviously, they don't have a appropriate one for me for the spinning logo. Boom. There you go. Wish I could get you a spinning one, but. Out and connect. The plug to connect. All right, see what other ones I can find. Appreciate you, NC Jolly. See if I can get a good action shot here. A lot of him yelling after making a big play. Ah, let's go. That's the one I was looking for. Nice action shot. Throw down. Woo! Let's go. Thirty-six, thirty-four, Creighton. We got a few more minutes from halftime. Yeah, if anyone wants to drop their their final four at the camp, please do. Oh, for Kirby? Yeah, it'll probably be situational, I would assume. Uh, look at some of North Carolina, UConn, Purdue, and Houston. I don't know. Houston as a one is kind of unreliable, you know. But again, we'll see if they end up overachieving. Sometimes, you know, history is meant to be broken, but a lot of times history repeats itself, you know. And again, you know, even though certain legend, iconic coaches may not be there, you know, anymore on the college basketball side, and there's going to have to be, you know, new champions, you know, that emerge, you know, throughout the college basketball history books. But, you know, I, I don't know. I, like, I, I'm not too confident in them when I watch them. Like, even if they end up being a number one or like a number two seed, it's just, I don't know, they could they, kind of irked me a little bit like I feel like you know it's like a good regular season team but then when it comes to like the tourney uh, they don't really play the same way so, for whatever reason but you can say that about a lot of teams but we'll see maybe they'll make it all right field goal percentage 48 percent for the Ducks 38 for Creighton but Creighton could be shooting like fucking 68 percent if they didn't, didn't take something damn three six for 23 from deep for Creighton which is a mistake, and if they end up losing this game, it'll be because of that. And Oregon is 4 for 10, so 40% for us. Offensive boards, only 2, 9 for Creighton, and we have to win the, the battle of the boards. And the defense needs to be a little bit better, too. But with all that said, you know, being an 11 seed and only down by 2 to a 3 seed, that's pretty fucking good. I mean, obviously being tied or being up by 2 would have been great, but, uh, you know, only down by 2, you couldn't ask for a, a better first half. The only thing that was kind of shitty is they gave up a three right when the buzzer, you know, ended, you know, right at the end of the first half. It would have been really nice if we could have had a 34-33 lead, but, you know, so be it. 
at some point they were going to have to make a three, you know, out of all the threes that they went deep on. I can't believe they shot 23. They're pacing for 46. Unreal. Before the game started, halftime. Let's go. All right, let me know what other photos that you guys want. If there's anything else that you want, NC Jolly, Megan, Reflect. We gotta have a strategy for uh, Ryan Kaltbrenner, 71270. You know, 17.3 points per game. So if we can find a way to minimize his damage down low and they keep missing a lot of threes, that's how we're gonna get back. Or we try to get him into foul trouble. You know, when you have Dante down low or Kutzard and we try to be able to get him to, to reach. You reach, we teach. And if we can get him on the bench, that'll definitely open it up for us too. But uh, he's really the, the main focal point so far in, in the first half. And we'll show a photo of him. He's earned it. With that 7-1 frame. Oh, Brenna. He's got some good jeans, man. Tall as shit. Everyone is having a fantastic Saturday. We'll even hit them with the Creighton logo. Not sure if they'll have a spinning one or any graphics, but we'll find out. But... Creighton Blue Jays. And I guarantee a lot of people didn't even know what they were. They're like, what are they? What is Creighton? There we go. Nobody's sleeping. Let's go. Twelve point seven boards and an assist. We got to find a way to minimize that damage. And it's like I don't really mind, you know, with Dante, you know, being two inches shorter, but sixty pounds different, you know, down low, two ten to. You know, 270, that's, that's a, a pretty drastic, you know, uh, mismatch, you know, based off the weight. So, you know, so at that point, you're going to have to, like, front him and have the help on the back end. You have to think of that different types of basketball strategy when you end up having a dominant player, you know, either double team, you know, you have the weak side defense, you front and you hedge them. You know, you're, you're going to try to be able to, you know, deny the basketball and front him. But if you're going to front a player like that, you got to make sure they just don't throw it over the top for an easy alley-oop and you have to go upside, you know, defense there. So we'll see, you know, what type of strategy Dana Altman has, but uh, I like what I've seen so far from the Ducks. Want to Pete along though? I got you. Your favorite player? I want more with nice stunner shades.
baseball right around the corner. Can't wait. I mean, besides obviously with the Dodgers and Padres in Korea, but I don't know how many people, you know, ended up watching that full game at 3 a.m. or 5 a.m. or 6 a.m. We're getting there. Let's go, baby. Warren Buffett. Before the game started, halftime, let's go. And make sure you're taking care of your mental health. Check off the boxes every single day. We have a lot of battles that we go through daily. So make sure that, you know, you're, you're doing the right things each day to, to win the day. You know, exercise, eat a little bit better, making sure you're checking up on your friends. Big thing. Oh, no worries. Get some gaming in. No worries. And if you end up coming back and if there's anything else that you want to be able to, to see, you know, once we get to a, a commercial break, just let me know and I got to. Appreciate you. Battle of the Bigs. Come on, Kusnard and Dante, that's how we win. They're gonna shoot from outside, we're gonna go inside. Let's go, Kusnard, Dante, let's go, let's go. Go, Dana. I said, I got you, oh, all right. Ooh, Kendall Gill, what a throwback. Nick Anderson, too. Penny Hardaway, Nick Anderson, Dennis Scott, 3D, Horace Grant, Jack on Orlando. That was a nice little squad that they had. And then obviously back in the, you know, the college days. Good old Kendall Gill. He was uh, underrated as well. Both, both were pretty good players. You know, a lot of the role players back in the day were better than the role players that are out now, in my opinion, in the 80s and 90s. A lot of those kind of names that have gotten got a little bit forgotten. You know, people are like, ah, oh, they weren't really that good. But you have to go back and look at like Hersey Hawkins numbers and, you know, Del Curry and, uh, and some of these guys like Kendall Gill and Nick Anderson. Now, they may, they may not be Michael Gordon, Clyde Drexler, Larry Bird, Magic Johnson, you know, but as far as role players are concerned, there was a lot of good talent, you know, that were in starting lineups that weren't like famous, as well as bench guys, too. Mookie Blaylock. Nice floor. There we go. Let's go. BJ Armstrong. Oh, yeah. Chicago Bulls, baby. Paxson, Armstrong, Jordan, Pippen, Horace Grant, Bill Cartwright, A.T. Canton. I mean, I can name drop for days. Come on, baby. Come on, Ducks. You already know what it is, baby. Kusnar, Dante, Dante, Kusnar, Kusnar, Dante, Dante, Kusnar. That's how we win. And, and if we start doubling down, it's going to cause turnovers just like that. 
And that's exactly great coaching by Dana Altman. You know, you know when you got a big guy that's got a 60 pound difference down low, you're gonna have to hedge him, you're gonna have to double him, you're gonna have to find ways to make him uncomfortable to, to either, you know, rush his shot, right? Or to have him pass it out and have it be a shitty pass and have it be a turnover. And that's exactly what they got there on that last possession. Love it. Shellstad, we might need him to be our third scorer, but I'd rather have the other guys. Oh, big block. Rejected. My goodness. Save a life. He said, Dikembe Mutombo. No, no, no. Get that shit out of here. All right, I see you. I see you. There's seven one ass. All right. That was a good block. I feel like momentum is starting to shift a little bit. Come on, Dana. Coach him up, baby. I assume uh, Creighton's head coach would, would probably say, hey, less three, you know, but we'll see. I love air balls. I mean, living and dying by the three, you know, they're taking it to a whole nother level. That's good though, because uh, again, if they were you know, smart about it, we'd probably be down by 12 right now. So keep playing the way that they're playing. Pretty, pretty possession there for the Ducks. Come on now. Come on, Oregon. Don't let me down. Great game. Come on, baby. That's crazy. We started Dante 90. Woo! Shellstad is off. You got to stop fucking shooting. You're hurting the team. I get it. You know, you might be one of the, the third option, but if you're ice cold, stop shooting. And if you're, you know, stop shooting from such you know deep range. Go inside. Gain your confidence. Any smart basketball player will tell you, you know, if you start shooting from outside and you go like 0 for 4, you know, 0 for 5, then work your way inside and then go out. You know, go for a layup, go for a floater, you know, go for something inside and then work your way out instead of just continuously trying to shoot from three. And that's the only thing you're going to do. I mean, you're playing into Creighton's hands if you do that. 41 38, Blue Jays. I, I get it. We got to have more than two guys, you know, shoot the ball, you know, more than, you know, it's like 80% of the shots are going to be here or here, but those are the guys that are effective. You know, if you're going to let other guys shoot, you better make sure that it's an open shot and it's close. Otherwise, Ryan Kalkbrenner is going to fuck us over. So let's go. Forty 
31, 38, Creighton. Come on, Ducks. Shout out to all the people watching on Twitter slash X as well as on YouTube. Love you. Appreciate you. Let me take a look at tomorrow's schedule real quick. All right, what do we got? We got Colorado and Marquette tomorrow, Utah State and Purdue, James Madison and Duke, Clemson and Baylor, Grand Canyon and Alabama, Northwestern and Yukon, AM and Houston, and then Yale, San Diego State. I imagine a majority of the eyes will be on that Houston game, the Yukon game, and the Purdue, you know, obviously because you're going to be looking at your bracket. You know, to be able to see uh, if any of these number one teams are going to advance or if one of them might fall off. Houston, a nine and a half favorite over AM, a nine seed. Will they fall? Purdue, 11 and a half favorite over Utah State. I, I don't see Purdue losing uh, against Utah State. And then uh, UConn, 14 and a half on Northwestern. I don't got UConn losing this early. Hell, they might be able to win it all. And then we got NASCAR Cup, Circuit of the Americas, 1230. Previous winner, Tyler Reddick. Can't wait for that tomorrow. And then more than likely, we'll end up doing the Canadians and the Kraken at 6, 6 p.m. Pacific tomorrow. Tied up, baby. Danny Sprinkle. Come on, baby. 13.50 to go. We're tied. Yeah, and there's no point, you know, to try to be flashy. Not everyone has to be Steph Curry and, you know, just shoot deep, deep, deep. You know, smart basketball players and teams, you know, will, will go inside. You know, I, I get it. You know, if you want to be able to, you know, be flashy and shoot from deep. But again, you know, if you look at the shooting percentage and you're hurting your team and you got a guy that's seven one that's got a 60 pound difference on the defender, like it's kind of stupid to not go down to that type of player when you have them in. But again, you know, that's what coaching is all about. Not every coach is created equal. You have to know mismatches and understand, you know, when you're in the rhythm and flow of the game or not. Dante, great defense there. Let's go. Six and one for the Pac-12. Woo! It's not heating up, baby. And what I say, I said 28 points or more is the magic number. He had 40 against his former school, South Carolina. And so for me to say, oh, he can get 40 back-to-back -back games is super unrealistic. But I think that you know, it is possible that he could end up getting somewhere between 28 and 34. And if we end up getting that, that could be the difference uh, you know, for us winning or losing this matchup. Uh, also, depending if we go to overtime or not. Fucking A. Ashworth with another three. Dante at 12. Kusnard already at 21. Fuck it. Like, it, it, and like, it, I feel that when you get guys that ball hog it, you know, it, it gets kind of uh, annoying, you know, like when you see one guy taking all the shots. But sometimes, you know, if you only got two guys that are really reliable, you know, you have to kind of go with it. And if Kusnard is going to be the guy, I actually don't mind if he takes a majority of the shots the rest of the way because he's got a higher shooting percentage than anyone else. You know, if you have these other guys shooting, you know, these uh, arid drinkies, you know, you're going to lose. So, ooh. Hawk runner with a good defense there. Yes. Just keep going back and forth to Dante Kusnard. Kusnard, Dante. Tracy thought he was going to dunk it on a 7-1 guy. Come on, man. 
Come on, Tracy. You ain't dunking on a 7-1. Who do you think you are, Vince Carter in the Olympics? Come on, dog. I know you want to throw the house down for all the Duck fans. Good block, baby. Kusnard, I see you. Yeah. Over the back. Can we get a call, please? I get it. He's fucking 6'1", and he's fucking 270, but if he goes over the back on Dante, call the damn foul. Let's go! Let's go! Move your feet! Come on, baby. Let's go! We're right here. We're right in it. So many threes from Creighton. Valhalla, what's good? What's good, brother? Hope you're doing great. I wish you the most success for your Dodgers and your channel. I'll have to try to hop in uh, one of these days when, uh, you know, like when I'm prepping or whatnot, you know, for my stream. And if you're doing a Dodger game, I'll come through. I don't know if you would ever be up for a collab between the Mariners and the Dodgers at some point in the season. You know, obviously we have our own methods on how we run our channel and how we, you know, call the games and whatnot. And there's not too many people that I would actually collab with. You would be one of them, you know, based off your hard work and your talent on your channel. So, you know, if you want to one of these days down the road, cool. If not, I'll still root for you to win. 47, 46, Creighton. Yeah. And like I said, you know, um, you know, even if I, I mean, I don't know how it necessarily it would work, but even if I had to hop on your channel to even, you know, like even if I'm live and you're live or, or however we decide to do it, uh, you know, I, I would, I wouldn't, I normally wouldn't necessarily be willing to sacrifice a lot of times to go on someone else's channel. But if it was you, I would. So there's not too many people I would do that for unless we can stream, you know, on my channel and your channel, but yours is the main and I'm, and then you're the one, you know, you know, kind of doing the play by play and I can just be kind of the color guy, you know, and whatnot. Cause I can do the play by play and color. Cause that's pretty much what I do and what you do. Uh, but you know, we can talk about it as we get closer throughout the season and whatnot. Uh, but either way, it wouldn't bother me, you know, either way, but I do wish you the most success. Yeah, that would be cool. You know, I'd appreciate that. You know, you go live, I go live, and then I can uh, set up the screen where we can end up having it look like, uh, let's see, something like that. And then you would be on that other side there. And then, you know, we can, you know, call play by play or color or, you know, however you want to do it. So I will. Appreciate you. And I got a lot of Dodger knowledge too. You know, like I said, my dad's been a Dodger fan since the 50s. And if there's a second team that I follow, just like the Mariners, it is the Dodgers. Like, you know, like I met Sandy Koufax, you know, when I was fucking 10 and got his autograph. And my dad's been watching games, you know, since the 50s. And a uh, big, big Dodger collector, you know, back in the Koufax, Drysdale era and until now. And and my dad is fucking hardcore too. If I could ever get my dad on the stream, my dad watches every single Dodger game, like literally all 162 playoffs. Like he doesn't miss games. Like um, obviously with you know my stepmom not into baseball, but sometimes he's got to watch it on the laptop while they watch a program 
or a movie together on the big screen. But uh, my dad is super dedicated, and you know, I've, I've followed them since I was a little kid. I'm 41. You know, I started watching you know, a lot of that when I was like three, four years old. So. Yeah, no, I hear you. Fifty two forty nine Creighton. Let's go. Right here. On Oregon, let's go. You too, brother. Make sure you guys subscribe to Valhalla too. Good. Does a little bit of everything, just like us here. Yeah, uh, if, we, if we could ever get enough people to do NASCAR, I'd love to do it on you know the channel. We did it a couple of years ago, and then last year, but you know, gotta have the support. So, I feel like me and Valhalla will have quite a bit in common, just like with Sarah and a few of the others in the room. Reflect, we all kind of have that same type of vibe on what we follow. Let's go, fifty-two, fifty-one, Creighton. Let's go, Ducks, and you're hanging around. Let's go, baby. Goose card falling out. Already got 24 points. That 28 or more actually seems feasible and possible now. And we don't want to get into a contest, uh, you know, for every three-point matchup. You know, trying to match threes with Creighton, that's how you lose. Just keep attacking the paint, you know, try to slow the game down, you know, go down low, you know, and just go for the, the buckets that they're going to give you. Kusnard and Dante. Dante Kusnard. There we go. Let's go. 52-51. 10.33 left in the second half. Let's go. 85 to go. Good defense there by Great. You know, there we go. Now we're getting some offensive boards. Nice job, Dante. He's like, oh, yeah. Be electric, my guy. Be electric. I mean, we might only have the you know the two studs, but hey, play together, play strong, play for each other, and we might actually be able to steal this. So in the tourney so far, with all the games updated, what's the lowest seed to advance for the men's and women so far? Five more. Let's get there. Like, sub, donate, comment, share. With the, like I said, if things were you know capable with the, with the buttons on the other side, you know, we wouldn't have a problem with that. We'd have much much more. So, so far, NC State for the men. And that's what an 11 seed like Oregon, isn't it? 11, okay. And it took them uh, in that matchup that I was watching earlier, overtime, to, to win, too, so. Nice. That was cool. It's always cool to have a uh, Valhalla drop in. I've dropped in on his channel a few times, you know, like I said. It's always nice when you have, you know, people that, you know, just want people to win. You know, you want people to succeed. You know, like I said, there's just so much ego 
you know, with people and their channels, depending on how many subs that they get to, you know, a lot of times people change, you know, once they hit that 10,000 mark or 20,000 or 30,000 or higher mark, you know, but uh, we'll never change here. And, you know, it would be cool to be able to, you know, have a, you know, a collab and that could definitely help us grow and, you know, get some people from the channel here to sub to him and maybe some of his followers to sub to me and, you know, we can go from, uh, go from there. So. If it ends up happening, cool. But if it ends up, you know, where he wants to do his and I do mine, it's not going to be any hard feelings. You know, we both want each other to win, which is kind of rare, you know, for YouTubers nowadays. So. Candace in the building. How are you? Good to see you in the room. How are you doing? Hope you're doing okay. 9.33 left in the second half. Creighton, Blue Jays, 52, Oregon Ducks, 51. I imagine some of his followers know who I am too. I mean, it's like a lot of people know his channel and they know my channel as well. It's just, you know, trying to be able to get the proper support, you know, finding the right people that can uh, bankroll the channel, finding the people that can be regulars and support. So, MSU in the building, what's good? Second half offense, Kusnor and Dante, 17, rest of the team, nothing. I'm totally okay with it. Normally, you know, I would be like, come on, we need to pass the ball around, but you can't count on anybody else on Oregon besides those two. So if you want to be able to try to win this game, you know, 90% of the shots the rest of the way need to go with those two guys. You know, and then occasionally, you know, someone else, if they have like an open layup or an open jumper, fine, but. Upside, upside. Rebound. Golly. Rebound. There we go. Kusnard. What a stud. Dude, good for you. Good for you. I hope you get it, man. You just need to get money going, you know, and get it get it flowing, you know. I think that would be a good spot for you. You know what I mean? I had some really good friends back in the day uh, that worked at Panda, and I, I worked at uh, Euro Heroes at a Euro spot. That was one of my early first jobs. I was a bag boy, and then I did like recycling for Thriftway, uh, you know, early, early on. And then after that, I did like uh, you know, KB Toy Store, you know, when they were still in existence. Uh, and then I did the Euros Euros, which was right next to Panda, and a lot of me and the uh, you know high school buddies and whatnot back in the day. Uh, at that time period, uh, you know, we had a lot of good good memories from back then in the food court. There we go. Miss layup. I'll take that. Come on, Ducks. Oh, nice. Congrats. The frozen four tourney. You keep me updated on that. It seems like a, a like a, a light switch. You know, it's all we have to be able to figure out how to defend, you know, their bigger players, uh, you know, and we have to move our feet a little bit better. And we just need to show a little bit more hustle and effort, you know, because like I said, you're going to get rebounds off miss layups. You're going to get rebounds off those deep threes. They're not going to make them all, you know, and like I said, you just have to make sure you put yourself in a position to get the rebound. No free throws for the Ducks. What's that about? Can we get a free throw opportunity, please? Foul! With the left! Are you fucking kidding me? Let's go! And then a turnover. Let's go! Can we get on a little bit of a run? Can we get a little bit of Uncle Mo, baby? Dante with 18. Kustard with 24. Woo! I love it! Let's go! Go Ducks! Feels like the momentum is starting to shift, but Creighton is still good, you know, with their, you know, deep shooting. You know, as of late, we, we have to make sure we keep them on it. I pass. Get up. Foul. There was a foul on the reach. Stay on and move your feet. Playing defense takes a hell of a lot of discipline in all sports, baseball, basketball, football, and hockey. 
anybody can, you know, be excited when they have the ball in their hands playing offense, right? It takes a lot of grit and a lot of energy to be able to put out that effort. There we go. They're really letting them play, huh? Come on, baby. No threes. No threes. Two-man game with Dante and Kusnard. Let's go. 7.44 left in the second half. Foul. They're getting chippy. You want to talk shit? All right, let's talk shit. Sit your ass on the bench. Talking shit to our best player. Good game. I'm glad that the Ducks aren't getting blown out. 53-52, baby. Let's go. Nice job, Dana. Go Ducks. Keep it moving, baby. Let's go, Dante. Evan's got zero. Tracy, four. Shellstad, seven. And we only have two guys uh, off the bench that are available that they may come in. So pretty much going to be the same five the rest of the way, I would assume. Let's go. Lauren in the building. What's good? Wrong Blue Jays. Ryan hasn't scored in the second half, I believe, so they got 14, 13, and 12. So they got three guys in double digits, and another Ashworth is a bucket uh, away from being in double digits as well. So 12, 8, 14, and 13. So pretty well-rounded for Creighton, and for us, it's just it's a kind of a two-man game, but hey, we'll take it. So who should I keep an eye on? You got anybody uh, that you've drafted that's going to be coming up out of AAA, AA, or single A? You know, uh, any any draft picks that are going to you know be in the starting lineup either at the beginning of the year uh, or at some point in the year? You know, what, what, have you been watching a lot of uh, Tiger baseball in the preseason or no? Like who do who should I keep my eye on besides the obvious? Let's go. Help your boy out. Like, comment, sub, donate. Support your boy. Make sure you're taking care of your mental health too. Very important. Go, baby, for a trip to the Sweet 16. Go, Ducks. Colt Keith. All right. I'll keep my eye on him. Lauren's like, I got one. Nice. Yeah, educate me. Let me know. You know I'm already going to be doing so many games, so. Come on, baby. Ducks up by one. It feels like the momentum has shifted to Oregon, but again, we haven't really been able to pull away because every time we pull away, it seems like Creighton gets a cheap bucket or a three. Who's got a little wild there with that layup attempt? Come on now. D up, Oregon. And it'll be really interesting to see if we end up playing man or zone the rest of the way. Move your feet. Good defense by Oregon. Jump ball. 621 left in the second half. Ducks up by three, baby. Let's go. 
go. Six minutes to go. Feels like it. All we need is like, uh, if we could get like a momentum shifting play, like take a charge, and then we could end up hitting a bucket off the charge. That could really spark Uncle Mo and that momentum based on how close this game has been. We need to find some kind of emotional play to spark us to keep us going. This is the biggest lead we've had all night. Three, and I'll take it. But it just kind of feels like if we can get it to like that six or eight point range, uh, not we're going to pull away, but you know, with the limited time that's left, hopefully they can play some good defense and control the boards. But I like the strategy, and Dana Altman had a good game plan at halftime. They're moving their feet a, a lot better. Over the back. Let's go. Can we get Ryan with some goddamn offensive fouls already? He's already hovering over the back on Kuznard and Dante multiple times, and they haven't called it once tonight. Motherfucker is 7 1 270 over the back every time. Come on now. Call the plays, call the fouls. Take his ass. Foul! We're starting to pull away, baby. Go Ducks! We're winning. Guaranteed. We're pulling away now. We just have to find a way. Momentum, momentum, momentum. Unbelievable. Hawkbrenner's going to go down low and take a couple fucking dribbles, and then you're going to call that foul on Dante. Weak sauce. Call it evenly. Five fifteen left. Ducks up by six. Now three. God damn it. Every time we try to pull away, they always make a fucking three. Rejected. That was a great block. Let's go. 5-11 left. Feels like, you know, as long as we don't have any horrible turnovers, we should be able to find a way to win this game. 20 and 15 and two blocks for Dante. Fantastic. What a fucking game for him. So snar, baby. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Kusnard, 27. Dante with 20. I like it. I like it. We just got to make sure that we have, like, that extra bucket lead. So that way we're, we're up by five. So that way if they make a deep three, we're still up by two. We just need to make sure we keep it steady, slow the game down. And uh, we don't really need to be shooting too many threes the rest of the way out, especially with 442 left. You know, we have to be really smart about these possessions. And the way that Kuzmart has been playing, he's feeling it inside and outside. 11-20 for shooting, 5 for 8 from deep. And then Dante down low is a monster, 10 for 16. 20 points, 15 boards, 2 blocks, 5 offensive, 10 defensive. Let's go, baby. Who start 27, 8, and, and what does he have? 8, 2. Woo! Let's go. Four oh seven left. Come on, baby. Go Ducks. Fucking Ashworth. Now they got four players in double figures for Creighton, the Blue Jays. Right? You got Kalkbrenner, Ashworth, Sherman, and Alexander. 13, 11, 14, and 13. So very well-rounded for the Blue Jays. But we got the higher numbers for our two Ducks. Foul! Can we get a fucking call? Unbelievable. This is definitely one-sided right now. Yeah, I can't believe how many over-the-back calls and bumps that Dante and Kusnard are, are taking, and then the refs are not calling it. And then you're going to call some petty-ass touch foul for Creighton? Bullshit. Call it evenly, fuckers.
He got fucking stepped on. That's what fucking happened. He didn't take a bad step. He got fucking stepped on. The announcers are incredibly biased. Move without the basketball. Move without the basketball. Dante uh, shooting a left-handed hook. That's a terrible shot with, with your left. Come on, man. I get it if that's a first half shot, but not with like four or three minutes, four minutes left in the game. That was a foul. Fifty-eight, fifty-seven, three thirty left. Yeah, look at Shireman. Look at all these motherfuckers are fouling and playing dirty for Creighton. Come on now, can we get a can we get a foul call? Three thirty left. Ducks up by one. Go Ducks. Well, I'm glad this game was entertaining, and I'm really happy that we're not getting blown out by 20. I mean, I still would have completed the matchup, but just nice that we're hanging around and we actually have a shot to pull off this upset. We're trying to win it for Charles Barkley. Now, I would have been fine if Barkley wanted to have us overachieve and make it to the Final Four, not necessarily the championship game, but... Need a little bit more touch on those shots, Dante. Use the backboard, my guy. Throwing up these wild you know, hooks with your right and your left. Use the backboard. Backboards aren't sexy, but you're going to get points that way. Ask Tim Duncan. Turnover. I remember Hubert Davis. 58-57. Ducks. Oh, the electric. Twenty-seven, eight, and two for Kuznard. Eleven for twenty shooting. Five for eight from deep. Dante, twenty and fifteen. Let's go. Find a way. Lauren for the with the link. Appreciate that. Ricky. And we ain't talking Ricky Bobby. Appreciate that. I love it when people will send me things, you know, that I can read up on or watch highlights or film. I mean, that might not be my favorite team, but I do cover the league as a whole, so whether that be MLB, NHL, or NFL, or college football. You know, I'm trying to be you know, as much of an expert as I can on every level. So it takes a lot of effort, a lot of reading, a lot of film study. And anytime I can get a little jump you know, on uh, some of the other players before we get to the regular season, I'm about that life. Plus, you know, if I'm going to be doing Mariner games, and I'm probably going to be doing over 100 of the 162 games in the season, 100 to 120, that's a lot of games. So. At some point or another, I'll be knowing every single lineup from every team other than the Mariners. So all 30. Getting close to baseball season, baby. Yeah, March Madness is always exciting. Much better than the regular season, and it's a thousand times better than the NBA. And hopefully once we get to the NBA playoffs, they'll start playing defense. At least some of the teams, some of the players will. Go, oh, Dana. Kuznar, let's go. Go, Jermaine. I need you to be electric because you can feel those threes are coming for Creighton. We have to have a little bit of a gap. 
Tied up, 58-58. Oh, this is going to be nerve-wracking. Oh, can we get a, a foul call in, in our favor? Just call it, call it down the middle, damn it. I mean, Kalkbrenner uh, should already have three or four fouls over the back. I mean, just watching, he already had two or three that they didn't call. And it seems like, you know, he gets the ball down low since he's so big. And then they'll have the, you know, if it's a body, the body, when you're in the air and you get it chest to chest, you're going to get that call. I get it. But the little cheap stuff, you know, the little hand checking bullshit, you know, especially when our players are getting knocked around. Come on. Here we go, Ducks. 16.58, 2.13 left. Nice backdoor cut for Creighton. Oh, they love calling fouls on the Ducks here late, don't they? Yeah, but it'll be cool to see her in the pros, and uh, hopefully she ends up having an amazing journey, even if they don't win the championship or make the final four. I hope they do, but if they don't, still, you know, you know she's going to be balling out, and it's good. It's it's drawn some attention not only to woman hoops but to basketball in general. Come on, Ducks! Rebounding defense, move your feet. Rebounding. Defense, move your feet, close out on three-point opportunities. Dig deep, suck it up. We're a fucking 11 seed. Let's go. How bad do we want this? Do we want the Sweet 16 or not? Doing it for Dana. Big block on Kusnard. On that previous possession. 2-10 left. Good open look for Ashworth on that previous look, but no good. Oh. Yeah, well, you're going to be getting a lot of people to, to go to Iowa just based on Caitlin Clark and her success of being there. Someone to try to pass the torch, you know, and keep the torch lit, you know, in, in that particular uh, school. So. Dante, God knows it. Whoa, baby. You don't want none of Dante. That was pretty. Sports Center top 10. Golly. Caught it and slammed it down with two. Golly. Hang time. Dante, Dante, Dante. You the man, baby. You the man. And if you didn't have this type of game, we're, we're already down by 10 or 15 points. Like we needed to have two players, you know, step up, and we already knew Kustard was going to do his share. He's got 27. I thought he would have to have 28 or more for us to win. He's right on pace. He's at 27, and there's chances are he'll probably get another bucket, you know, before the game ends. But he's right there. But I'm not sure if anyone anticipated fucking Dante going 22 and 17, and that's a nice blessing in disguise. Nice job, my guy. Impressive. Proud of them. They're playing tough. Real tough as an 11 seed. I mean, the way that the Ducks are playing right now, they they, they are looking more like a, maybe a 6, 7, or 8 seed, not an 11 seed. I like it. Let's go. Let's go. Up by four. This game is ours. We're going to win this. Go Ducks. Let's go. Got to keep that cushion. Minute 22 left. Up by four. Let's go. Oregon in its own. Interesting call by Dana Altman there. Rebound! Got to get those rebounds. Uh, 
Well, we're close now, baby. Minute four. And now Creighton will get desperate and they're going to start launching those threes, right? We just have to play within ourselves. We don't need to be like Creighton. We just need to be like Oregon, okay? Shellstad, don't fucking shoot the ball. Dante Kuznar, that's it. Shireman with a runner. Who does he think he is? Chris Mullen? Get on the ground! We got this. 34 seconds left. Let's go. Oh, baby. Let's go. Let's go. 28 seconds left. We're up by four. This is us. We got it. It's in the bag, baby. We got it. Do it for Uncle Phil. Do it for O-Dog. Let's go. Woo! Let's go. Travel, man. Unbelievable how many calls these refs are missing. I mean, this is blatant. Blatant travel, blatant mistakes that are not being called. And if you're going to foul Kusnart, fine. Fuck it. Dante's right there. But he did get away with a push in the back. We have to keep it real. But for all the calls that have been going for Creighton, fuck it. All right, we're up by two now. Fuck no, Shireman. There you go. Wrestle that fucking ball out. Come on now. And Tennessee will be just as equally as hard, if not harder, than Creighton, so. But you never know. You know, Ducks uh, have a knack for overachieving. We're very well coached. Should have went for an alley oop there. Should have went for the alley oop. I've seen Shireman travel like five times in this fucking second half. Can we get a traveling ball? I get it. He's big and he's on my thumb. Sixty-two, sixty-two, thirteen seconds left. Overtime. Fucking A, man. Overtime. Is that how it is? Overtime. We got this. This is a good game. I mean, I wish, we, I wish we would have won it in regulation, you know. And you got to give Creighton credit for fighting back. Hell, they are a three seed. It's not like we're the three seed and they're the 11 seed. Oh, hopefully we can find a way in OT, baby. The last guy that you wanted to have go to the line uh, is Dante, and of course, that's where the ball went. Guy shooting 60% from the line, you can't expect him to make that. I wish he would have, though. If he would have made that free throw, I think we would have won. At least in regulation. There's the Shireman shot. A little replay. He said, like, I gotta I gotta do something. The O Dog put me on the thumb. D 
decent attempt for Kusnard, but go to overtime. And if Oregon wins, we'll be the second 11 seed to win in overtime. Yeah, midnight on the East Coast. Well, I mean, but again, if Kusnard would have made it, then we would all would have celebrated, and then it's nothing. So, I mean, it was a decent shot, you know, and so, and that's the guy that you would want to shoot it besides Dante. So, I don't got a problem with it. If it would have landed, everyone would have been excited, and we wouldn't have said anything, right? So, sometimes the, the ball bounces your way. Sometimes it doesn't. But we still got a good opportunity here at the end of the, you know, overtime period here and uh, see if we can make some magic. Now, hindsight is twenty twenty though. Easy to say that now after he missed, but. but he's played great. And again, the magic number for me was 28 points or more, and he's sitting at 27. How ironic is that? But I did not predict Dante having as big of a game as he is. 24 and 19 for Dante. Let's go. 27, 8, 3 for Kusnard. And then uh, as far as Creighton is concerned, they got four guys in double digits. Got Kalkbrenner, 14, Ashworth, 11, Shireman, 18, Alexander, 13. Very well rounded, balanced team for the Blue Jays. And we got something they don't got. Jermaine! Let's go. Let's go, Ducks. 64 62, baby. Come on, Ducks, hang on. Nineteen ninety seven. Wow. My girl's got a dope Creighton shirt with all the players on it. Second straight overtime game, two overtime games in the rest of the tournament. Oh, sweet jacket. Oh, look at those cheerleaders. I know them. Let's go. Let's go, baby. Let's take care of business. 64, 62, 339 left in OT. Shout out to all the people watching on Twitter slash X as well as on YouTube as well. Nice floater. Ah, Creighton. Just when you think you might be able to pull away, you know, it's always going to be something. 65, 64, Creighton. Come on, baby. Thirty straight points for Dante and Kusnar. Two forty-eight left in OT. Sixty-five, sixty-four. Blue Jays. Come on, Ducks. You you would assume that every once in a while, you know, a blind squirrel is going to get a nut and they're going to get that fucking you know three pointer to go in. We need to do like a, an up and under, like a pump fake and then a drop step and up and under to be able to draw some fouls on golf runner. Let's go, 65, 65, baby. Hey, Oregon pretty good in 11 seed, huh? Let's go, 66, 65. Up by one. 217 left in OT. Let's go. Kusnar Dante. Kusnar broke that threshold now. 29 points. Alexander there with that steal. God, late. He's a scrappy player. Let's 
Minute 50 left, 67, 66, Creighton. Come on, Ducks, move your feet. Unbelievable, man. Ashworth and all the rest. Come on now, you gotta close out. Minute 50 left, minute 26 left. Down by one. Wow. Game's starting to slip away a little bit. 69, 66, Blue Jays. Like one more bucket and it's over. We gotta dig deep here. There we go, good free throw. Minute to go, 69, 66, Creighton. Key up, baby, let's go. Move your feet. Uh, can we rebound? Fuck. So I feel like we needed a timeout. Can't leave fucking Kalkbrenner open like that. Unbelievable. Hopefully Oregon isn't dumb enough to, you know, start just launching for three when you're down by three. You need to go for two and try to draw the foul. We're just throwing the game away now, I guess, huh? And the more experienced uh, team with that three seed inching their way to the Sweet 16, unless we have a miracle here from Oregon. Like we needed a timeout with around like two minutes to go to kind of set ourselves up and to have a breather. A couple careless errors. And now they're starting to heat up. 37 seconds left in OT, down by three. Duda in the building, what's good? Nine sixty eight. Come on, Ducks. Thirty seven seconds left, down by one. Down by three, seventy one sixty eight. This one feels like it's over. A little too little too late here at the end and a little bit of you can't have sloppy possessions in the last minute minute 30 especially when the game is so close every pass has to be crisp every offensive possession has to be calculated you know oh, oh baby 71 71 let's go 18 seconds left thank god oh baby Kusnard with 32, Dante with 26. Let's go! Both points for, uh, through the first two career tournament games. Jermaine, 69, huh? Okay. Unbelievable. It's a lot of pressure, you know, to be able to shoot, you know, from deep when we're not really as good as Creighton from deep. You know, 7 for 17 total. Thank God that ended up happening. Unbelievable. 18 seconds left and we actually have a shot. Are we gonna have double OT? We'll find out. 
Nice job by Tracy to catch that air ball and put up that put back a couple plays ago. 71 71. Shout out to all the people watching on Twitter slash X as well as YouTube. Shout out to you. Appreciate y'all. God, this is a uh, gut wrenching, man. Let's go. Go, Ducks. 15 seconds left. What was for dinner tonight? End of overtime. We're going to double OT. Holy smokes. Hey, you know, we don't give up. Uh, you know, Ducks, you know, we're going to fight to the very end. You know, whether it's in, you know, men's basketball, women's basketball, or obviously for college football. Hell of an effort by the Ducks as an 11 seed. Unbelievable three. Who started fucking unreal? Single-handedly keeping us in this game with Dante. Yeah, well, if you're on the East Coast, uh, like Kyle, 12-13. You know, but there's not a whole lot, you know, unless you have to work tomorrow. You know, only thing I got to, you know, think about, you know, watching is uh, NASCAR Circuit of the Americas at 12-30. Uh, and then deciding what we end up doing for a stream tomorrow. If we do the Canadians or the Kraken, or if we end up doing a, a March Madness game instead. But it kind of just depends on the support with the likes and the subs and the donos. So. Go Ducks. Oh, golly. I thought well, one overtime was something. Oh, man. Double OT. Twenty six and nineteen for Dante. Thirty two, eight and three for Kusnard. I mean, we only really have two good players that we can count on out of the five, but if they're putting up numbers like that, that's how you end up going to double OT against a team that's got four guys in double digits uh, in the Creighton Blue Jays. You know, four players, a little bit over 10, or two guys that have monster numbers for the Ducks. So, 15, 85 to go. Yeah, seriously. Let's go. Uh, Creighton, 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 Creighton. Why? 74, 71 Blue Jays.
What's the biggest lead? Is it like five or six points? Three thirty-five left. Seventy-four, seventy-one. Blue Jays, and they've been getting a little bit hotter from deep. So, you know, for them to be able to continue to keep going deep, Fox seventy-seven, seven. Now they might be over. Now, now we're down by six. Brutal. I mean, you can't expect Kuznar to, to match these threes that Creighton is putting up. Travel, but I mean, we may have to ask for a miracle. I mean, we got one with you know him going deep, but you know now it's almost getting out of hand. Now, if you can end up getting like a, a an easy bucket down low for an and one, but the only problem is if it's Dante, he shoots like 60% from the free throw line. So what are the chances of actually getting an and one from him? Not that good. Oh, yeah, we lost. Fuck. 79, 71, Blue Jays. This one's over. At least we pushed them all the way then to the limits, you know. Double OT, you can't ask for anything more than that besides triple OT. Fatigue is starting to kick in, and uh, Creighton kept using that momentum. Too many three-point shooters. And then plus, if, you know, Kuznard starts missing and Dante, then, like, we don't have anyone else that can actually make a bucket, so. Tough, 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 tough. But uh, good season for the Ducks, and shout out the Blue Jays. They earned it. They probably didn't think it was going to be this tough, though, against an 11 seed, but here we are. You know when the 7-1 player makes a three, everything is fucked. You know what I'm saying? He's just sitting out there open, he shoots the three and he makes it. Yeah. It would have been more painful if Oregon was the three seed and Creighton was the 11 seed losing this, you know? So again, I, a lot of people didn't even have Oregon winning this game. So I just wanted to, you know, hope that they could bring in some competitiveness and some fire and you know but again when you and you're you know when you're mismatched and you only really have two good players and you can't even really count on the other three in the lineup sometimes this is the the end result you know Creighton has the more of a well-rounded roster from top to bottom and it shows it took the double overtime to show but it finally showed it showed its ugly head and its ugly face to us but congratulations to the Blue Jays they earned it yeah. Well, we only had two players that they would even consider bringing in, but you know, got to have you know more options. Got to have a well-rounded roster. You're not going to see too many uh, double overtime games in, in the tourney, so I'm glad we fought and we had a chance to win. You know, if Kuzman would have been able to make the bucket, so how the cookie crumble sometimes. Yeah, well, we're tired now. You know, like I said, they're they're tired and they got they they ran out of gas. Creighton moves on against the Tennessee Volunteers. Nice job, Creighton. GG. You guys earned it. We had to push you to double OT, but 
You found a way. Seventy one Blue Jays. Eighty six seventy one. What could have been? Did everything that he could. Same thing with Dante. I mean, if Dante didn't have a huge game, then we would have easily lost by 20 or more. So. But it shows you the importance of having depth. You know, and having a third guy and actually having a bench. You know, and if you don't have a third guy and you don't have a bench, then eventually you're going to run out of gas. You can't, you know, expect everyone to be Jordan and Pippen for the whole game, you know, <laughs> or Kobe and Jack. Eventually, you know, those guys are going to run out of gas, get in foul trouble, or just get on a, a little bit of a cold streak. So. Thirty-four seconds left. Yeah, and it would have hurt a lot more if we were the three seed and then they were the eleven seed. So not like a lot of people had the uh, eleven seed Ducks beating the three seed Blue Jays. So but always cool to be able to uh, cover the Ducks, even if it's you know the last game of the season. And there it is, final score in double overtime, eighty-six. 73 Creighton. Nice job. We're creating a little logo love. All right. Well, I appreciate everyone that, uh, you know, watched on Twitter slash X as well as on YouTube. Uh, shout out to everyone that commented, donated, shared. I appreciate you. Uh, I'll be watching the Circuit of the Americas uh, with Baisley tomorrow, NASCAR 1230. And then uh, more than likely, we'll do the Canadians and the Kraken at 6 p.m. Pacific. But if I decide to do something else, like a March Madness game, I'll definitely post it in the socials. And uh, but other than that, you know, uh, GG to Creighton. They did a hell of a job. And uh, I wish them the best of luck when they go against the Volunteers in the next round in the Sweet 16. And I got one question for you. Please no talk sports like us. Your boy Ryan, Northwest Sports Fanatics, and I'm out. Yikes.